I don't know. I feel like we've gotten some of our best games in Bronze League Legends just by going to this map. Mountain clearing forces some very peculiar behaviors out of players, I want to say. For those that have not experienced mountain clearing before, mountain clearing, because of the mountains on the outside, pushes you very close together. The only thing that is clear here is how quickly your ass is going to be grass. As you can see how close these players spawn. But we've got an interesting one here. We're going to be seeing some bronze HR and Oh my god, he kills the sheep with this cow. <laughs> one damage, one damage, one damage. Run, sheep, run! Don't be abused like this. <laughs> Where is he going? <laughs> okay, this is already brilliant. We have a double scout opening for the English. For all those asking, I'm sure the most important question that matters right now, what is Marco's rank? I've got you covered, folks. Marco, 7RJ, is 646 ELO. You heard that correct. Red, 650 ELO. Green, abashed pants. I had to. A name like that, I had to check them out. Abashed pants plays a lot of HRE. They are 580 ELO. So a fairly close matchup in this game. But is it a close matchup for Civs? Because both these Civs have upsides. So if you ask like, pro-level players, they'll tell you that actually both these Civs are very viable. In fact, uh, when we had the off-meta combat round in Golden League 2, HRE was one of the surprise factors that got banned on this map. A lot of people didn't expect it, but for good reason. They can cast stage rush and Burgrave rush, or even go for Reynix with easy access to two relics. So makes a lot of sense. This Civ can be pretty potent here, especially considering the generation. Like, look at this Arkham Chapel placement. You can either go on the foot on the south side, get the D and the gold, or you can go on the north side, get the gold, stone, and either way, you're always getting wood alongside this. So really, really good spawn here for green. Red on the other side, the reason why the English can be so good, you could even think about short bow rushing. We haven't seen it often, but the longbow play across such a short map is something to behold. Oh my god, this is something to behold. Marco has allowed the sheep to walk all the way home. And a bashed pan. Never done anything about it. In fact, the Bash Pants went the opposite side of the map, so he missed an opportunity to yoink several sheep. <laughs> How do you get away with this? I've tried, it never works. They always arrive. They always take your goodies. And well, we found exactly why Marco builds a second scout, because you know, when you dive the enemy TC with your first one to get that last piece of knowledge, you're gonna lose him, so you need that second scout afterwards. So that in two minutes' time, you can dive the enemy TC again. <laughs> Yo, look at this. Oh, my God. A bash pants. I love this guy. I remember like feeling like such a, a, a smart nerd ahead of the curve when I talked about this um, in the early days of AOE4. It's like moving your sheep to the corner where your gold is so that your prelate is able to buff back and forth between the gold and the food line. And he's done exactly that. And this also means that they're going to be in position for wherever you want to drop the Arkham. It did admittedly get a little bit messy on the way, but you can see the intent in mind here. So the Arkham is probably going to be placed near the stone here. Alternatively, it's going to be right here um, between the TC and the mining camp. But considering the Arkham Chapel is a drop-off point, and I assume Abashed Pants knows that, maybe he just like aims for the wood line here. I think the relic's too close for that, so it might just be up towards the stone. Meanwhile, Marco's base. Marco uh, is saving up for Castle Age. As we know, it's an unknown trick that you can go from Dark Age to Castle Age if your dad works at Relic or Microsoft. And Marco, he checked his dad's LinkedIn account and realized that actually his dad's been lying for 10 years. He doesn't work at Microsoft. So instead, he will have to build through Fuel Age first. With a lot of gold in the back. Oh, TC, TC, TC. No garrison. Abashed. He learned from Marco's scout dive. Not all scouts have to be suicide. And what is this? So he chose to go for the deer and the wood, but not the gold. Understandably so. A bashed pants says, why would I need the gold when I can just get regnets and get gold anyway? I don't care. I hope he's going to push these deer in, though. Are we, are we going to get a deer push? Oh, we're getting the deer push. Was that intentional? Was... No, really, was that was that actually intentional? I don't know if that was intentional. I think that was intentional? I'm not convinced. Maybe? 
All right. Well, he's not pushing them in now, so I'm going to lean towards probably not. They are stacked beautifully for a mill if you ever want to drop one. He could be sniping them down now, but instead it's just all on wood. So this is peculiar out of a bash because usually the HRE put a lot of people on food and some on gold and they rush cast Age. But instead a bash is going fairly delayed into a second TC considering they've already gathered over a thousand extra gold. And because they have next to no one on food, they aren't actually going to have any way of affording the extra TC. Meanwhile, on Marco's base, Two Lombos. The Intimidation Lombos, if you will. Because why would you hang around in Feudal Age? Clearly, you just wanted to use the Konami cheat to go into Castle Age. So, come on. I love the fact that he's daisy chaining in houses to get the uh, the emergency repairs out here. Here's an interesting thing. You did not need this many houses, by the way. So... Uh, Abash is one of those precautious guys. He's played enough HRE. He's been slapped out of the game enough for you know not doing anything for the first 15, 20 minutes, which is what HRE loves to do. To understand that it's better not to take risks. So he'll daisy chain in the houses anyway. It looks like we have actually got the mill. So it's going to be onto deer. And there's no way this works. There's no way this. Wait. Wait. Wait, no, no, just don't attack it. Just just build. Build. Scout's coming. He'll save the day. Help me, daddy. Say hello to pop up. So Scout goes down. It's okay though. Marco built two Scouts for a reason, so he could lose both of them. And it buys enough time. Oh no. Abash has to back away. He has to cancel the TC. And folks, while this is going on, Marco hasn't been AFK nothing. Marco's been doing God's work. The wall. <laughs> I don't know what this wall was. <laughs> a wall intended to keep Pumba on the sacred site to prevent people from capturing it. What a genius. And no. No. He didn't cancel the TC straight away. He lost like half of the resources there. So what do you do? A bash. He says, you know, when life gives you gives you melons, you realize you got the wrong antidote. Instead, he's just gonna have to go back on the stone, reset and go again. Distracted by the the fight here, Marco is actually drawing all the attention to Bash. So Bash was not gathering in the wood there. A bash can afford to go for another TC. Chooses not to because right now they are microing, they're distracted. And Marco has to be feeling great. Look at the exchange of value so far. Mile ahead. The Bashed, looking a bit lost. He could try for the TC again. I think that would be GG, though. If you're going to do this, which you should because you, just, you had the resources, you just build it at home. But no, not no. No one would uh, no one would be silly enough to build that, that TC out in the same location again. <laughs> no one would look in the same place twice, guys. Come on. It's like an RPG. When you open the chest, you don't go back to... Open the open chest. And this move is great, actually, from Abash. So Abash draws red to the back of his base because archers are here. You need to address it, right? So the whole army responds. But then what does Abash Pants do? Abash Pants runs the archers towards where the TC is. A bold maneuver and one that he is surprisingly enough going to get away with. Because remember, Marco, last time he spotted this TC, had a scout. Check Marco's vision. It's like an old man with cataphracts in his eyes. I don't know where I'm going here. I'm just going to reach out, and if I accidentally grab you on the boob, it was an accident. It's totally innocent. This is definitely not why I don't put my contact lenses in. He's going to move in, though. Timing could be brilliant here. Regnus is being built up, but only by six villages. And, yeah, Abash realizes that I have to commit. But it's two little villages to commit. He needs to pull back. Now, if Marco wants to win this game right now, he just sits here. He just sits here and does not move. Marco's like, oh, I've been, I've been sitting in my chair all day. I can do this. I mean, it's just I'm doing it in game instead of real life. And, oh, my God. Abash cancels the Regnets. And he switches into Burgrave. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, this game just took quite the interesting turn, which is intriguing considering it's already had about four turns that we didn't expect. 
Second wave coming in though. Tech up is complete, but Marco is everywhere and anywhere. And the villagers caught in the arch rangers gathering the deer. And Marco right now, this is him. This is a listening with Marco. Yes! Yes! Die! He's rubbing his hands together. I don't think I had enough friction going on for that to come across the mic. But he's killed 16 HRE villagers. Even on a double TC HRE, you feel the pain. And you just went for Burgrave. How do you afford Mass? He has less than 200 food a minute right now. He has two TCs to sustain, which cost him 150 food each per minute. Right now, he cannot afford both of his TCs. Cannibalism begins to look quite tempting right now. Sadly, Age of Empires 4 does not support cannibalism. Hashtag say no to cam uh, cannibalism. And hashtag say yes to berry madness. So he sends all the villagers out into the berries. He starts to transition farms away from the Arkan. What? Considering that Abash set up the lumber camp and everything else alongside this, I'm wondering if he realizes that the Arkan's a drop-off point. Because now he's missing out on 40% extra gathering per villager. But come on, guys. I mean, like, let's be totally real here. 40% extra gathering, that sounds OP. That sounds stupidly broken. Nothing like that exists elsewhere in the game. Abashed is just keeping the game interesting because look at this pitiful little English. They only killed 16 of our villagers. We're still 10 ahead. What will he do? He can't stop us. Well, Marco may have just created the unstoppable. Because so far, this landmark has caused hell for its opponents. The White Tower has seemed like the MVP of mountain clearing in this series so far. How will Abash Pants address it? Abash Pants decides that that Burgrave is really fast at pushing out spears. And growing up, he played a lot of Dynasty Warriors, and he was a really big fan of Zhao Yun and Lu Bu. And they both have spears. So Abash Pants decides against the English, despite the fact they'd have Lombos, we need more spears. Because Lombos, they are slow to fire, guys. There aren't many of them. Sure, they'll probably kill like 80 of us, but the rest will get through. We just need to build at least 50 more spears first. Meanwhile, Marco now going into the Rams. They both have been playing Blacksmiths, which I'm actually pleased to see. Weirdly enough, though, Abash Pants has not got marching drills, which is a, a kind of a big no-no here, especially at this stage in the game. They did upgrade their men at arms and then briefly stopped after getting free out. And Marco seems to know. I think he got a glimpse of this because check this. He killed one crossbow and then stopped. Oops. By the way, you are seeing this correctly. Abashed Pants uh, doesn't. He didn't want this to come out like this, but he he's an atheist. These relics mean nothing to him. Sure, he's playing the HRE, but are prolets really religious? I mean, it says religious when you click on them, but is it religion that they are they're pushing? Or is it German efficiency? I think we know that Germany's official religion is efficiency. So these relics don't matter. They're too Old Testament. Sure, they could buff up your outposts and give you gold, but who cares? I don't need gold right now. I need more meat. I need a lot more meat, because that army just got completely clapped. Well, it turns out that pushing into the English with archers and spearmen, probably not the best idea. Yeah, he's got a second wave of men at arms coming in, but maybe he should have had them here in the first place, because they just got wiped out as well. So Bash Pants is perplexed. He doesn't get it. He was told Burgrave is OP. He watched YouTube videos that shoot it. He sees that you can push units every four seconds, three seconds. How can this not win? English OP, ladies and gentlemen, that's the answer. That's the only answer that they ever want to hit. That's why he's got outposts, that's why he's got a castle. That attack speed, GG. And this is starting to kind of look like GG. Burgrave is one of those burn fast, burn quick. You have a window of Burgrave, but it's like five minutes if you're lucky. 
If you don't do substantial damage, you're out of the game. Now, polls are in. We ask you, did Green do enough damage? Poll says... No. But luckily, we have plenty of polls to poke at what's coming at us. Sadly, it's Lombos, which counter us! Oh, no. Does Green at least know about emergency repairs? He's got Ball and All coming, but it's way too late. His army gets wiped. He pulls villagers to repair. Green, no. He repairs is still off cooldown. He does not use it. Crossbows cannot stand against this. Rams are on the farms. This is actually effective because there's 75 wood each and they're not even buffed. I do believe Green has lost. Unless he can pull out some Hail Mary. Unless we get some sort of wall law. But you want to know another reason why English OP... When did you ever in this series see an English player get wall alone? You don't because half their armies are always lombos. <laughs> oh, this base is smush. Bash pants, man. I think where this really went rough for him is that second attempt to place down the same TC. And then the delay on even coming out to do it. That was the harsh part. Then the regnets not dedicating enough villagers to get that tech up fast. Like, those two added details really screwed him here. And then ended up with this, the Burr Grave. I mean, guys, it's got Grave in the name for a reason. A Bash Pants is now having that realization. As he continues to push archers to take rams out. Guys, it, it makes sense, okay? If you add more wood to the wood mass, then it slows it down. And if it's slowed down, it can't reach your building. Knights arrive just in time to clean up the Lombos. This is actually the brilliant move that we've been waiting for, for Green to make. So Green is going to reset the situation, at least temporarily. But Red has got another wave prepping behind this. Red, by the way, has still only been pushing Normie Spears. Lombos were at least upgraded. But behind all this, Red did stop at 49 eco, not a dime more. Both players, despite the fact they have relics in their base and despite the fact that one player is playing as a Civ that hears the word relic and immediately lets out an orgasmic noise, uh, both players have yet to pick them up. In fact, there's a reason why the HRE is called like German lands and you know, like Goldfinger was Dutch, which is close to Germany. I think you're getting where this is going. But yet still, a bash pants with zero gold income, pushing knights, does not pick up relics. And I don't blame it, man. I mean, guys, these relics have been on the ground for at least like a few centuries. They probably have all kinds of germs. All right. You know, if, if like that class I took in primary school taught me anything, it's like, you know, they probably have like gonorrhea on them. And like, you know, malaria, Ebola, E. coli, all on that relic. I wouldn't touch it either. And then the and then the prelate goes back into the economy and gives everyone else E. coli. Or, wor or worse still, F. coli. It's too dangerous. So he stays far, far away from the relics. As far as he can for someone whose base is literally in the middle of relics. Mango. Oh. Worth? No. Oh, no. It's okay. Second one will get him. Worth? I think so. TC is gone. A Bash Pants army is single digits. That's usually not a good sign at 33 minutes into a game. I do believe this is the point where Green is outdone. Because this army has a bunch of men at arms included, as well as the Mangos. So any comp that a Bash can try to get out is going to be held hostage. The only upside he has right now is that Red doesn't have building siege. He does, however, have torches. He out does. Oh, no, no, the repair! Okay, thank God. Green was quick to react. Springled. He's going to take out the Mango. But folks, like this is a different fight than before. The Lombos were countered by the Knights, but now like there's such a, a healthy mixture in here from Marco. The guy who goes to the ice cream stand and asks for uh, hundreds of thousands, sprinkles, chocolate marbles, and every other topping, Raspberry Ripple included. Uh, he's covered in all bases. He's not coming in where he'll just lose to one type of unit. Green. Man, it, it pains me to see an Arkin that... 60% of his AoE is buildings. And those buildings aren't farms. But one thing I will respect Green for. Check this. 
The lumber camps. The lumber camps are in range. He can afford all the wood needed to rebuild farms. God bless. It's appropriate to be God blessing because I think he's going to be going and seeing gods very soon. I think five rams is actually enough to end this game. I just always love how organized houses are in these games. <laughs> By the way, uh, someone who didn't highlight is this is once again a Who Needs Mills English player. He did build one mill, but that was just for tech. And he just happened to build around it. The rest of these are not English farms. They are just normie farms. The only upside he has is that they were cheaper. He's missing out when a huge buff of 25% food gathering rate. But he doesn't care. He should have a bash and get a few more minutes, but I don't think a bash is going to get that long. March in. Dude, look at Green's resources. Just a few minutes and he could have been back in this. But I think this is going to be in the road for him. Eco is about to fall below that of red. Rams it in on the Burgrave. He found the emergency repairs, but it's too late. A bash pants uh, is going to get bashed in the pants, but the target wasn't the fabric he's wearing. It was his ass or balls underneath, and it hurts. It hurts to watch right now. It hurts any time I have to watch an HRE player in cast Lage build archers. It hurts even more when those archers are fuel age. It hurts even further when that said HRE player is 39 minutes into the game with zero relics ever picked up and zero gold income. It is fair to say everything hurts. And a bash pants plays a lot of HRE when we check his records. He's no stranger to this sit. But it seems the moment he went Burgrave, we were a little bit too off script. <laughs> and the last all in from Abash. He's like, if I just kill his, if I kill his landmarks first, I can win the game. I just gotta kill this, kill this. No! The Bash Bats. Without any income now, this is the last of the troops. No more rams, no more shenanigans. It was a cute idea. He's been waypointing rams to the north and around into the base. But I think he's ran out of time here. Marco. He's enjoying himself too much to end this faster. Everything comes out, he instantly murders it. He wants to keep Green's head permanently in the mud. But you keep him there too long, uh, it turns out he drowns. 